Do you have that nagging feeling that because there's such an overwhelming quantity of material that you need to practice, you sometimes neglect the quality in your rush to get through everything? In this video, I'll give you a few simple and actionable tips to increase the quality of your practice sessions, whatever you're working on. When I got really serious about the quality of my practice, I saw more progress from less practice time. So much so that the musicians I play with regularly actually commented on the difference. Let's start by asking a really simple question. What's the point of practice? Well, the results need to stick and they need to be usable. In other words, you've got to be able to hold on to the information and skills that you learn over the long term and you've got to know it deeply enough that you can apply it easily in real time as you play. I'll get to the practical details of how to do this in just a second, but it's going to help first if we go over the two things that will stop this from happening. The first issue is lack of focus. You need to have high levels of concentration throughout your practice session to help the new information stick and to go deep into your long-term memory. Now this means making sure that you're focused at the start of practice sessions and keeping them reasonably short so that you can maintain that focus throughout. A great answer to the question, how long should I practice for, is as long as you can remain focused. Little and often focused practice is going to beat occasional binges easily. And the second thing that's going to mess up the quality of your practice is if you don't go deep enough. If you move on from a topic you're practicing too soon, then you might know it theoretically or be able to do it okay, but you don't own it enough to be able to play it easily and flawlessly in a performance situation. So you want to be going deep into what you practice. Pick a topic that really matters, break it down into small achievable steps, and stick with that topic until you've made really long significant progress. So to tie all that together, you're going to want to stick with a topic over time, working on it little and often. That's going to allow you to maintain focus in each individual practice session, but over time build up the depth that you need to really know stuff. And a great way to do this is to have a small number of different topics that you've always got on the go. That way you can rotate between them, keep things fresh, not spend too long on anyone in each individual day, but you're always making progress and you're sticking with those few over time and really going deep. But how do you actually put this into practice? Well, you're going to plan in advance, set an intention, take short breaks and use time limits. First up, plan the topic that you're going to practice in advance. Pick a specific area, put those other topics that you might want to work on to one side for the moment. Know what exercise you're going to work with on this topic and know what your goal is. So what counts as success for this practice session? You really want to be getting to a point where you can say, did I do it? Yes or no, rather than how good did I think this was in a subjective sort of way. Now, this takes some time to do, but the time you spend planning is going to pay off in results in the long term. Now, I like to spend a bit of time looking at the area as a whole once I decide this is a, something I'm going to focus on and planning out the big picture of that. And I'll do that once, but then on a daily basis, just the night before, I'm going to pick what is the little exercise I'm going to be working on the next day. So that's how I plan it on a day-to-day -day basis. And just before you actually start to practice, you want to set an intention for that session, both to be present and to be focused, and also just to remind yourself of exactly what your goals and exercises are. So just take a second to calm your mind before you start, rather than just jumping straight into the practice. It can be a good idea to close your eyes, take a few deep breaths, that sort of thing. And it's much, much easier to make sure you get focused properly before you start than to try and build up that focus during the session itself. But no one can maintain strong focus forever, so you're going to want to take some short breaks to just allow you to get that focus back to recharge. Now you're going to want to plan these breaks in advance. So I'd say absolute minimum of one break every hour. I like to go a bit shorter than that, maybe half an hour. And a five minute break is plenty to just recharge your batteries, take your mind off things, then come back focused. And you're probably going to want to use a timer for this just to make sure that you do actually respect that plan to take breaks. Otherwise, I certainly know it can be easy to get lost in what you're doing and time just disappears. 
you're also going to want to limit the time you spend on any one topic before you switch to another one. Now this could mean switching from one topic to a completely different one, or it could mean switching from one exercise on a topic to a related exercise. So again, you're going to want to plan this out in advance and set a timer. And one thing I find particularly useful here is to give myself a period of time to work on a topic that is less than I would ideally have for it. So I'm never going to be able to get as much done as I would like. Sounds strange, but what it helps with is that really helps me focus because I know there is, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on the edge as it is. I'm not going to do as much as I'd like. And if I lose any time, that's, that's gone. Plus, it means that I'm almost always going to stop when I'm still interested, when I'm still learning things, when I want to do more. And that's going to keep my motivation to come back and practice this more in the future. And definitely remember to set that intention again and to reaffirm your focus before each new topic and every time after you take a break. So I used this really effectively when I used to have a two hour practice session every morning, first thing when I got up. And I completed it without fail every time. And the reason for that was I had it all mapped out. I was choosing what I was gonna work on the night before. I had it split into three different periods. It wasn't just two hours as a block, three separate ones, so easier to concentrate throughout. I set myself timers for the different topics, so I knew I really had to work on it. Otherwise, that was it. I was on to the next one and I'd missed my chance to improve in that area for the day. And it really helped me make amazing progress setting things out like this. Now, it can be easy to get fired up with enthusiasm for this sort of approach at the start, to keep your focus tight and to dig deep into things, but you may find you hit some roadblocks along the way. And that's probably going to be around the feeling of, but can't I work on everything else? How am I ever going to learn everything that I want to if I'm doing this quality, moving through things a bit more slowly? And if you find yourself coming up against that feeling, then I definitely recommend checking out my video on objective setting next. It shows you exactly how to set objectives so that you can always see definite progress that you're making. Also, let me know in the comments below what you're going to try first, setting an intention or using a timer, or maybe both. And if you want the special practice and performance tips that I only share with subscribers, then head on over to playinthezone.com and sign up for the emails. They're free. I've been Mark Morley Fletcher. Thanks so much for watching. Please click the button below to subscribe, and while you're down there, why not hit the share button as well to pass this on to other musicians? Take care and I'll see you in the next video.